It is November 7th, 2022. I'm at the Georgian, Georgia Southern University Armstrong Campus Recreational Fields and I'm gonna show you once you're standing here in this field where to find a small flower pawpaw plant or a few because there's a lot of them. So we're walking into the woods this way. That way leads to a parking lot. So we're going in this way, and this is also how you get to the disc golf course, aka Frisbee Golf, but I guess they can't call it Frisbee. So you just walk over this way, there's lots of giant trees over here. And then here is the pathways to the, one of the frisbee golf course things. There's a concrete slab there. I assume they're going to connect to this actual path at some point, but that's right there. And then right here, we have a healthy little small flower pawpaw patch. One plant here, bigger one, that one, that one, and then, oh. As a bonus, I was also looking for this, but it's not the pawpaw, but here's a little baby common witch hazel. And another one back there. But this is the small flower pawpaw here. This one has really healthy leaves. Most of them by right now, November 7th, have lost their leaves if they're in full sun. This one's in full shade here, so it's still got all of its leaves. As you can see, these leaves are rounded and they're narrower at the base, though it's not very obvious on this plant. If you look at this young leaf right at the very edge, you can see how it kind of starts as a triangle and then gets wider as it goes out. But the surefire way to tell pawpaws apart from other things that look like them, like young hickories, these the leaves on this plant are smooth around the edges, and if you look where the leaves attach to the stem, they go in a zigzag formation known as alternating. So there's one on this side, then over here, then on this side, all the way up and down the stem. And then to tell pawpaws apart from other things, you look at the very tip of the branch, and you can see the terminal bud, which is that fuzzy brown bud next to the base of the leaf here. That's how you can tell what pawpaws are when they don't have any leaves in the winter and super early spring. But yeah, this is a really young one because it's not even a foot tall. But in summer, well, late summer, these produce an edible fruit. Although this fruit is smaller, I don't know, there's a truck. The fruit that small flower pawpaws produce, like the name implies, is smaller than the fruit of common pawpaws that are more common up north. We are in Savannah, Georgia, which is southern Georgia, and common pawpaws, you can find them in northern Georgia around Atlanta. Atlanta specifically is where both species, both of these species of pawpaws, can be found in almost equal numbers. So. If you're watching this video from Atlanta, you might be able to find small flower pawpaws and common pawpaws, and you could even find them growing right next to each other. One way to tell the two apart is that common pawpaw leaves will be very, very much bigger than these are. This is, the biggest leaf on this plant is maybe the size of my hand. Common pawpaw leaves would be at least to here. At least twice as big as these, and they would have a much different texture. The leaves here are pretty smooth. On common pawpaws, anytime you see a vein on the leaf, it kind of like puffs up between those veins. So it has a very textured appearance. But yeah, so these are both native to North America. And there are a lot, if you're in Florida, you probably already know if you know about pawpaws, but Florida has a lot of species of pawpaws that are found pretty much only there. 
I know in like even further south in Georgia you can find some of the species. I think you can find woolly pawpaws, but I don't have a car so I won't be going that far to find any anytime soon. But if I do, I will definitely make a video about it for you. Anyways, look at this cool ant. But yeah, apparently you can crumple up the leaves of pawpaws and they'll smell like green peppers, but COVID-19 kind of destroyed my sense of smell, so I can't really help with that one. But yeah, these are native plants, so if you are able to collect fruit and collect the seeds, you have to keep the seeds moist. They're like citrus. You cannot let them dry out or they'll just die. I found a little moth. So you're gonna get a video of this moth while I'm talking. If you want to plant the seeds, you have to keep them moist. You can wrap them up in a damp paper towel and put them in a plastic bag until you're ready to plant them. And when you plant them, you have to plant them like two inches deep because it is a very hard seed coat. So the plant has to expend a lot of energy to get the seedling out of that. And if you don't plant them deep enough, the seed leaves might get stuck in it and it can accidentally kill itself or just cut itself in half. So it's not a very good success rate if that happens. But unlike most, le unlike most seeds, you have to plant pawpaw seeds pointy side down. Like, or no, pointy side up. Because pawpaws are weird. They have, they have a flat pointed down on one end and a flat base. You have to point the base downward because that's where the roots will come from so that they don't have to flip themselves upside down to grow. Pawpaws grow best in shade. A lot of people are planting common pawpaws in full sun because they technically do produce more fruit that way, but it's not actually healthy for the tree and it will lead to your tree dying in a few years if you don't put in a lot of care to protect it from the sun. They are meant to grow in shade, so yes, you can plant them in full sun and get lots of fruit that way, but they're not meant to bear that much fruit, so your, the tree's branches can even break, which means all your fruit gets lost anyways. So if you have the option to plant them in sun or shade, I would go with shade, or at least give them some kind of shade. Anyway, here's this cool ant again. But yeah. If you do come here and you want one of these plants to take home, don't bother trying to take cuttings because they don't survive at all. I have not had any of them survive. Your best bet would be finding a really young one, like younger than this one here, and digging it up by the roots. Also, we're going to look at this plant quick because I think, pretty sure this is a baby coral honeysuckle as opposed to Japanese honeysuckle. I'm not sure, but it, it looks like coral honeysuckle. And I know there's a coral honeysuckle plant around here somewhere, so I guess we'll find out. And there's another one. Yeah, I think that's the coral honeysuckle. Which should be around one of these sides. Let's see what lamppost says it is. Oh, this is lamppost 9. So this is where the coral honeysuckles that were growing over here were. It might actually be, yep, that's it right there. I guess we can see if I can walk over here. Uh, let's go around this way. So this video is just a bunch of things. Yeah, here's some of the coral honeysuckle coming back here. And I know this is coral honeysuckle because we saw the flowers. I'm assuming all the berries have been eaten by now. But assuming there's no snakes over here, we can walk over here. Stepping on some of the vine. Sorry, plant. Oh, yeah, it's on that side of the fence 
But if you see right, where's my hand at? Right there at the end. That's another way you can tell it's coral honeysuckle because right before they flower on the vine, they'll produce leaves that are kind of circular in shape like that. So yeah, this is the one I found earlier in the year and those are the seedlings over there. So that's cool, but yeah, this is lamppost 10. And if this, unlike pawpaws, is really easy to clone. So you could just come over and pull up kind of any section of this that's small enough. It's everywhere over here. And this is the native honeysuckle that's native to North America, if I didn't say that. Most honeysuckles are native to Asia, because back when Pangea was a thing, their ancestor lived in the section before it got broken off, and then they evolved to suit the different environments. So, yeah, this is kind of an eclectic video, but it's fun. So, yeah, so we are at the Georgia Southern Armstrong University Recreational Fields. Just walk this way, and then here, the path that leads to the disc golf course. And then right here is this pawpaw. Come here later once all the leaves are gone. Wow, it's two, three stems here. And just look for this little bud sticking out on the end because that'll stay the same whether there's leaves or not. And yeah, you could, because I think they mow this stuff down pretty regularly. So you could take this home and plant that and have your own little native honeysuckle. All right, that's it for this video. Bye-bye.